Hey folks, welcome back to another episode of Straight Talk Whiskey. I'm Nick here with you as always. Thanks for joining us for episode number 104. So, we've got a bourbon for you this time. You may have recognized it. It's pretty iconic and it's been around for a little over 150 years now. That's the Old Forester Classic. So, this among many of their expressions happens to be just the typical entry level. Bottled at 86 proof, so 43% ABV, which is nice to get a little kick up. Um, and it is a company that's owned now by Brown Foreman. It sort of gets its history way back, as I said, 150 years ago, around 1870 is when they started making the bourbon. And so when the 1920s came around, we had Prohibition, of course, and a lot of people's, you know, story goes that they had to go under for a little while, they had to resurface, had to get their momentum back, come back into the industry after Prohibition had been repealed. So Old Forester, on the other hand, was actually able to secure uh, permission from the government to keep distilling. Um, we all know of some uh, whiskeys that were sort of for medicinal purposes, as they still are now, of course. So, Old Forester was one of them. Now, originally, George Garvin Brown, who had created this, that's sort of where you get the, the Brown, Brown Foreman, that family tie there. Uh, one of the claim uh, to fames that they had in those early days was that it was one of the first bourbons to be bottled, if not the first bourbon to be sold in a bottle. Now, this doesn't mean it was the first bourbon to be sold that were sold in other containers, but, you know, their claim to fame, it seems like they, you know, punch you in the face with the marketing that, you know, it's the first bottled bourbon. That's on the front as I shake this thing around. It's also probably on the back, too. Um, if you go to their site, it's all over the place. First bottled bourbon. It's even got a trademark on it. If you were to go to the new distillery, more of a, I believe it's a tourist experience, visitor center kind of thing that's supposed to be opening this summer, and ask somebody, I, I, you know, you could ask them how their day was, and I'm pretty sure they'd say, you know, Old Forester was the first bottled bourbon. Pretty good, how was yours? You know, that that's, this seems like they beat you over the head with it. Uh, one of the things, you know, you always read the labels on the bottle just to see what's going on. Sometimes it gives you history, sometimes it gives you good insight to how the product is made and that sort of thing. But sometimes it just gives you some really weird descriptions. So I'm just going to read this quick. I don't normally read the labels on bottles, but it says this whiskey is distilled by us only and we are responsible for its richness and fine quality. Its elegant flavor is solely due to original fineness, not finesse, fineness, developed with care. This is all underlined. There is nothing better in the market. Now that's supposedly a quote from George Garvin Brown, the founder of Old Forester. So you can imagine that was a few years ago, a little bit less competition, so maybe they could have that claim to fame. But I just love that wording. Slightly pretentious, but um, whatever. Uh, so this is one of the only bourbons, might be the only, that was sold continuously before, during, and after Prohibition, which I think is kind of cool. So anyway, let's, uh, let's get into it, see if there's anything else I need to give to you. I don't think so. As I said before, it's now owned by Brown Foreman, and... The website is a little bit weird because it says that there is an Old Forester distillery coming, but in the description it just explains that it's a visitor slash tourist center, a tourist attraction. So I'm not sure exactly what that means or what the plans that Brown Foreman has for it. So that'll be interesting to see in the couple uh, upcoming months we've got to, to see how that goes. So if we look at the color, pretty you know, traditional, this is about as, you know, if you need to 
if you've had some really weird, you know, single malt American whiskey or some weird finishes and stuff like that, and you just need to get back to basics, Old Forester Classic, the 86 proof, is a good one to get back to. It's just a good base um, to get your feet wet. So on the nose you have that typical bourbon palette. You've got campfire palette that I like to talk about a lot. And just that campfire smoke, a little bit of the s'mores note to it, just some toasted marshmallow, a little, little bit of vanilla, a little bit of graham cracker that I get in there. Definitely some cinnamon, some rich deep vanilla coming through there. Definitely a sweetness the corn sweetness, hint of spice. More of like a rye spiciness to it where it's got some really, if you can imagine, some rich dried fruits. That's the sort of note that I'm getting on this. So let's go in for the taste. No, this is a great one just to to sip, you know, mix with cocktails and that sort of thing. The mint julep recipe is, is pretty big for them. I believe they were the official drink of the Kentucky Derby. However, many years back, the Old Forester mint julep, I'm not too keen on, or I'm not too up to speed with sort of the mixed drinks and all the accolades that they get, just because that's not something that I typically go towards when I'm having a drink, but nonetheless, that's an interesting fact about it. But, so with this bourbon, right, like I said, there's no frills, no thrills. I do enjoy it. Um, as you can see, I took a little bit of a hit out of the bottle, so enjoying it nicely enough. It's just got that, you know, typical thing that you would expect in a bourbon. It doesn't, you know stand out from anything it's just sort of you know it's what it is and corresponding to that a lot of times you find this bottle on the bottom shelf you know that's just the way it is you know it's serving serving a market serving a need there's nothing terrible about it there's nothing great about it it just you know it is what it is so but on on the palate what you're getting if you haven't had it before is just the standard caramel notes vanilla, corn, sweet corn, um, a hint of cinnamon, not overly much. You're not getting a lot of the rye spiciness that I picked up in the nose, but that's all right. And just, it's a nice, well-crafted bourbon that doesn't, again, jump off the deep end. It's got a great sweetness to it on um, the entry, you know, when you're drinking it, which is nice because the finish is not overly long. So it's nice to have a little bit of something, a little bit of, you know, get up and go when you taste it. You get a really nice sweetness, corn, vanilla, you know, those really fresh grain notes really come through, which is nice. In terms of age, I don't know how long this is aged for. Originally, back in the day, they were one of the um, the first after Prohibition to enlist in the um, bottle and bond program, and you know the aid, the bottling at 100 proof and the aging regulations made by the government, which is four years. So they were big proponents of you know following the law, just sort of on the straight and narrow, um, trying to get past whatever they needed to, you know, to be able to continue to produce this. And you can't blame them really for it. But I think that speaks a lot to what this is now as bourbon. It's not something, you know, where they're going and taking huge risks or anything like that. It's just sort of appeals to the most, most amount of people, but not necessarily connoisseurs. But to, to make up for that, they do have some other versions, which I'm hoping to try. One of the big ones you might know is the Old Forester Birthday Bourbon, which they started, I believe, in the early 2000s, sort of as a nod 
to their founder just celebrating their history of course but I don't I don't think they expected the response to it I mean people just go absolutely nuts trying to find the old Forester birthday bourbon I can't even touch it. I can't get my hands on it I don't know where one is you have to go into the you know muddy waters of the secondary market you know to find something like that if you're lucky enough or you can pay outrageous money at retail because that's what the shops do is they know that people are you know doing a little sketchy backhanded dealings you know selling their whiskey um, and so they'll they'll shoot the price right up you know because somebody has the money and will get it and you know can flip it like that but you know everybody Everybody who does that sort of takes the fun out of it for those of us who just want to get a taste of it, see, you know, what the buzz is about, um, see if they actually like it or not. Just because something is highly collectible doesn't mean it's that great. Um, case in point, the um, Van Winkle Lot B that came out a little while ago, um, there was a lottery in Pennsylvania that they do for limited release bottles. Got one of those and tasted it wasn't really anything phenomenal and I couldn't understand why so many people were just losing their their minds now I know it's not the the Pappy 25 or something like that which you know is decent whiskey but still something that you know a lot B that's really nothing you know to write home about was nothing substantial compared to the price that people were paying for it you know people are paying like three four hundred dollars to get their hands on that bottle I had so whether I did something or not with it is none of your damn business again not really long finish the mouth feels not overtly compact with with flavors you get a, a lot of the grain notes through it, the corn, none of the real rye in there. You get a little sweetness from the vanilla, and the hint of caramel, but not overly so. It's sort of like if you've eaten like a bunch of gummy bears and you got sort of like the taste and your mouth still leaves sort of like an aftertaste there, but nothing long in terms of, of finish. And the mouthfeel is pretty you know, pretty watery in the sense that, you know, just goes down, there's no real thickness or, or chewiness, sort of like a, you know, single pot still or some other whiskeys that I've certainly reviewed that have had that. So, that's it for episode number 104. Hope you enjoyed. Um, as always, if you're going to drink, drink responsibly, and see you next time.